Hello, my fellow hunters. How many of you get all excited when you see this? That's the wrong picture. That's... Oh my... That I, let me just... I don't know how this happened. Let me just move this back and then if we go in... Okay. This! This one's an ogre! <laughs> I don't... I've never seen that other one before. I swear! Okay, so, it's fair to say that the flagship monsters are, well, favourites, and for good reason. They're pretty much universally fantastic, and Zenogre is no different, and Zenogre is one of the most popular and heavily requested. The Thunderwolf doesn't do a lot for me, I admit he has a certain je ne sais quoi to him, but, you know. But I totally accept objectively, yeah, I get it, he's pretty badass, but... Firstly, he's never really gelled with world's more kind of grounded aesthetic. His colours are very vibrant and, and almost unnatural. The whole lightning thing is hard to sell when it's not coming from a psychotic magic pony. Although, you know, it is from a symbiotic relationship with Thunderbug, so it's explainable. But, you know, your average hunter player isn't going to really know or care. They just see green and yellow lightning wolf frying them and their friends. And I... I don't know, I always feel like he'd look a little bit weird in World's Art style, but I might be biased against him, because, you know, eh. But at the same time, I would not begrudge him joining the roster, because it would add something very unique. His fighting style, his flippy fun, is something that would be incredibly visceral to weave and dodge around in World. But it was never really on the table, because dogs stay on the floor, because he's like a wolf, which is close to a close to a dog and like on the t on the t on the t on the table and that is because there's no skeleton for him world has been very rigid when it comes to reusing the skeletons and not adding entirely new archetypes even everything on the leak list fitted an existing skeleton however behemoth changes this did i did i do it right that time behemoth 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 Alright, look, I know I butcher that word, alright? It's the Yorkshire in me, and sometimes I can't help it. So know that I technically know the correct pronunciation, but also know that I'll probably still say it wrong this entire video. So get that through your system right now. Have a little bit of, like, turn around from the computer and have kind of like a, Oh, he's such an idiot! Like, I do that, and then and then come back, and, and we'll have a good time together here as we talk. So, firstly, what little new information we have about him is quite interesting. He's gonna be big. I mean, we knew he was gonna be big. He's throwing dirt around like a chew toy, but apparently just shy Kulv to Roth big. And the other, well, big thing is he's getting his own arena, so... That's kind of curious whether that will just be his own little area in the recess or it will be like Zeno where he's not on the main recess at all. But then again, he was holding a dodo. So was that just for flavor in the trailer? Apparently, he's going to be insanely aggressive and they draw comparisons to how passive Lao Shang Lung be and how it's going to be very far away from that. And I feel like it's kind of interesting they're comparing him to such a large, well, essentially siege monster. So I'm very curious as to how this is going to play out. We're getting some Final Fantasy music as well, and it just looks pretty good. Sadly, they're not planning any other kind of crossovers like this. This very much seems like a Stars Align one-off. It was just right, so... That's kind of sad, but yeah, I am beyond hyped to see how they implement Mr. Behemoth. But more than anything, he changes things because he quite clearly, and, and by the way, it's so badass that we're getting freaking Behemoth from Final Fantasy. is such an iconic monster and fits so well naturalistically into the world of, well, world. He's huge and <laughs> please let him summon meteors. Oh, but he very clearly is not using an existing skeleton. You might argue that it's maybe Jagras, but unless they have done one hell of a job disguising that fact, I don't think it is. In fact, as many people have been making the comparison, it looks very Zenogary. Now, this is a landmark moment for Monster Hunter World, because if it is indeed a new skeleton, this is the first time we've deviated from, well, the established rule set, the established norm, that even the leak list didn't allow for. This is completely new, out of left field, 
unpredicted, and that's kind of exciting. I would almost hazard a guess to say that this really was never fully planned. I imagine it will have been an idea stage, but I believe this is something that wouldn't have happened if the game had flopped. I think the success has very much driven this through to fruition, and now we're going to start actually diversifying the roster on a base level. Because he is using the Zenoga skeleton, like the way he stands, the proud feet down, head up, it totally looks like it, the head structure, the way the neck feeds into the back of his head, and the way he angles it and looks, it just gives that proud Zenoga flow that we've come to know and love. And the thing is, I don't think Zenoga would be an inherently aggressive monster. He definitely has that self-importance, mm, you, me, immortal, <laughs> about him as he wanders around. He's very used to dominating his environment and Apex in his own right. I mean, he's incredibly physically powerful and fast Thunder Wolf. Like, that's a good combination there if you want to succeed at the old game of food chain. And uh, I just get the feeling that it's kind of gonna happen. Zenoga really hasn't had a front and center role in a while now, and I think in a poll of the most loved and sought after flagships, he'd easily be top three. I think he'd be in contention for winning it. I know I'm in the minority not really loving him that much, but then again, I do deeply think that any monster brought to life in World's Fidelity, I would fall in love with, because I will admit, I hated Uragan with a fiery, burning passion. <sighs> Fucking Uragan. But in Worlds, I kinda dig him. I really do. I mean, it's still, still one of the worst monsters for me, but I at least can appreciate him now, and I imagine that feeling will be recreated with something like Zenoga. And honestly, it is kind of weird initially, right, when you think that they didn't put in really any major flagships, the popular monsters outside of the required Rathalos. You can't have a monster game without Rathalos after all, but none of the others really got a look in. I mean, Rusted Kushaladora was a flagship, but we've only got normal Kushala, so... Ah, it's not a really well-known one anyway, so why not? Well, actually, I think when you think a little bit more, it does make sense, because you want World to stand up on its own merits, right? You want the new systems, the new flow of the gameplay, the new breathtaking environments and visuals. You want all that to be the reason. You don't want to necessarily just go, look, it's a, it's a star-filled lineup of all your favorite monsters. There's Rathalos, Legeocris, Sinoga, Brachydios, the Faded Four lining up, and I, I feel like they would overshadow the game's somewhat kind of mute the beginning of the new generations of Monster Hunter, as it were, and that's kind of my theory behind it at the very least, because it's the only thing that makes sense not wanting to include monsters that quite literally people would buy the game for, so I think it was a ballsy move, but I think it's one that ultimately paid off, but now the game has proven to be a success, proven to work, proven to be so loved, I mean, the next logical step is to weave in some of the old favourites. I mean, what better way now than to keep giving it little spikes of activity than, Hey, Sinoga's coming. Hey, Brachydios is on the way. Hey, how would you like a little bit of Tigrex? Uh, although I'd prefer Nagakuga, but I think people generally prefer Tigrex. But actually, you know what? You know what? I'm going to do a poll in the, in the description. I, if I remember. If not, it will be a comment. It might be both. I don't know. I could do anything. Oh, I might have emailed you. I haven't. I don't know your email. Or do I? Either way, there's going to be a poll, and I'm going to have every flagship on there, and I kind of want to get a feel for you guys, my lovely viewers, what your favorite is. And maybe I'll do a little follow-up video on how that compares to mine. I think that could be quite interesting, actually. But Needless to say, I think there's another little bit of supporting evidence in the Monster Hunter store. There is plushies for lots of monsters, and all of them but one exist in the game. The only one there that is not in the game is a Zenoga plush, right? That's gotta be a low-key hint. It might be a reach, we might be we might be really trying to grasp at straws here, but come on, that's that's gotta be right. Like that's that's yeah. 
Yeah, come on, totally. You gotta get on board with this. But either way, I just want to start a dialogue, a discussion on how actually significant Behemoth is. It's not just a first time other monster from other universe, but it's what it represents. A new skeleton coming to a game and a future of possibilities. Suddenly, very suddenly with him arriving, kind of nothing is off the table. And the thing is, if it is the Zenoga skeleton, only really Zenoga and I guess, well, Behemoth uses the Zenoga skeleton. Yes, Zenoga is a fanged wyvern like Jagras and Dodo and Jiros, but they are very different in their structure and gait. They are very much their own setup. So it means they're adding the skeleton for potentially just two monsters. So really at that point, nothing is certain. And I am very excited for the future for Monster Hunter. I think the success of it, the popularity, has opened the doors for some real ambitious additions that they were kind of on the fence about even being able to do. I think they knew and said that they would support it at minimum for a couple years. I think they have ideas in place, but which ones actually get implemented... I think that's very much shifted. I mean, it might just be me. I might just be being optimistic, but, you know, I love this game, so of course I'm gonna be. Zenoga himself, then, just to do a quick little uh, lore down, is quite interesting. So he has a symbiotic relationship with Thunderbugs. They look like little yellow floating orbs, and they take in natural electric charge. That they generate very similar to an electric eel. It's an internal body process. Zenoga, then, can attract them. They land on him, intermingle with his fur, and he essentially drains them, like Zenoga himself is a rechargeable battery of a body that can very easily expend his electric store and then replenishes it by getting a load of giant flying thunder insects to come and rub up against him. It's said to be one of the most beautiful sights in all of Mon- No, it's not. It's fucking- It's, it's kind of freaky. It's like giant, gnarly-looking bugs, really. I mean, grinding up against a wolf monster. It, it's but you don't want to be a rat. Like if you're into that, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna judge you publicly. But I'm just saying, leave the Zeno Like if you walk in on a Zenoga and he's mid Thunderbug rub. Moving on, he drains the electricity, charges up, uses it in combat, enrages, fully charges, and it bursts and spirals out of him. He leaps in the air, he's very acrobatic, spins, tail slams, thunder bursting of it. What the fuck? Uses strength and speed to great advantage. Kind of like Odo, a little bit less quick, but a lot more leaning towards brute strength. But for his strength and size, he is very, very fast. And of course, you know, being able to fire literal lightning helps. So... To make him work, then, you'd have to give him a home, right? And the thing is, he likes higher mountainous areas, but that still have a bit of forestiness to them. So you can kind of make a case for both the ancient forest and the coral highlands, and indeed, he could occupy both. In fact, I think a really cool idea for this little thunder puppy would be Coral Highlands, a special event quest where you're there with a Kirin and a Zenoga, and then Kirin gets its first turf war. Imagine these two lightning monstrosities clashing head to head as the sky sparks and lights up with their collective fury. I mean, I think Zenoga would lose. Kirin's still an elder dragon despite being on the weaker end of the scale, but oh, what a spectacle it would end up being. In terms of, you know, general power, he's technically on the level of a Rathalos, an apex predator, but, you know, in gameplay, mechanically, he's definitely on the hard and than a simple Rathalos, but that's kind of where he sits in the food chain. But hey, I think he would decimate a Rathalos simply because of the thunder advantage, even if he can't quite get into the air high enough to actually damage him. So I think you could have him in the forest, you could add thunderbugs at the same time, they're only little floating orbs, but I wonder if in World's Fidelity we'd actually see the insect itself. I mean, imagine actually seeing Zenoga getting completely blanketed at them, like you can't see him but for his face. He howls and drains them dry as they all go to, like, husks, fall on the ground around him. That's how he achieves his supercharged state. 
Oh, that would be both disgusting and intimidating as hell if you pushed him too far. Either way, I think he is potentially absolutely wonderful. I'm convinced that with just a little bit more exposure to him in just the right way, I'll start to see what it is that makes so many people love him. I mean, admittedly, I do like him as a creature. I guess, actually, if I'm going to be really kind of like, oh, okay then, about this, it's his colour scheme. I just don't like his colour scheme. I think physically he looks really cool. It just... I just think the general aesthetic is, I don't know, it just, I wouldn't have wallpaper in Zenoga skin, I guess is what I'm going to throw out here. <sighs> Either way, let me know what flagship you'd most like to have back, fill in the poll, and, you know, coming about it, that's all good, but I really kind of want to get this possibility going, like, what are you really hoping for here? Am I being too optimistic? Do you think I'm reading too much into this? Do you think, come on, Zenoga's not happening, but I don't know, I don't think any one of us would have ever predicted getting Behemoth from Final Fantasy, so the sky's the limit. It's not over to lit Zenoga. <laughs> I'm trying my best here, okay? Like if you enjoyed this, subscribe for more. I will see you all soon. My name has been Josh. A good boy. Rage gaming with the video float. But well, that's all that's really relevant at the mo, but I'm still gonna leave this up so you patrons know that I love you even though the outro's no longer that kinda relevant. But the new one's being worked on and it's gonna be a truly badass song, and don't worry, I won't be doing any rapping on it. I'm gonna go now. Uh, this was shit.